this video, we are going to discuss how to round calculated answers. By the end of this video, you should be able to apply the rules of rounding to calculated results based on what type of calculation it is. There's one rule for addition and subtraction, and there's a different rule for multiplication and division. When you are adding or subtracting numbers, you round result, the result to the same number of decimal places as the number with the least number of decimal places. So if we look at this first example, 5.7 plus 3.21, if you plug that into your calculator, your calculator will tell you 8.91. However, when we're going to round this answer, if we look at the number of decimal places in both numbers, the 5.7 has one decimal place, the 3.21 has two decimal places, we're rounding to the same as the one with the least number of decimal places. So our final answer should have one decimal place. So we're going to round to the tenths place. Look at that one place beyond. One does not round it up. So my answer would be 8.9. If I have 47.298 minus 32.7, my calculator tells me 14.598. The first number has three decimal places. The second one only has one decimal place. So my final answer is going to be rounded to the first decimal place. I look one place beyond that 5 point, sorry, 0.59. The nine is going to round that five up to a six. So my answer would be 14.6. If we look at the last one, the last one's a little bit trickier and you won't tend to have ones like this too often. Uh, but if I have 120 plus 13, my calculator tells me 133. Well, the second number here goes out to the ones place. There are zero decimal places in that number. If we look at the 120, there's no decimal, plate, decimal point here. So really it's going out to the tens place, which means my final answer would be rounded to the tens place. Um, so the final answer would be 130. If there was a decimal point after the zero in 120, that would indicate that that final zero counts. So we would go out to the ones place, and that would be 133 would be the answer if there was a decimal point written after that zero. Again, you're not going to tend to deal with that too, too often in chemistry, but I'm just going to throw that in there for you so if you see it somewhere you won't be confused by that. So when you're adding or subtracting you round the result to the same number of decimal places as the number with the least number of decimal places. When you are multiplying or dividing you round the result to the same number of significant figures as the number with the fewest significant figures. So 3.892 times 5.70, my calculator tells me 22.1844. The first number here, 3.892, has four significant figures. 5.70 has three significant figures. That ending zero does count because there's a decimal point in the number. So my final answer should have three significant figures, which would be one, two, three, so it would be rounded to this place. I look one spot beyond the eight. Eight is going to round that one up, so 22.2 would be my final answer. 4.79 times two. My calculator tells me 9.58. If I look at significant figures, 4.79 has three, 2 has only one significant figure, so my final answer should only have one significant figure. So I'm going to round to that only place that has a significant figure. That 5, however, is going to round the 9 up to a 10. Notice I do not put a decimal point at the end of the 10 because that would give it two significant figures, and my final answer should only have one. 13.985 divided by 330 gives me this really long decimal in my calculator. And I wrote out all of it, 
that my calculator displayed. Usually when I do calculations, I will write out the entire answer before writing the rounded one. That way, in case you happen to have gotten just the significant figure part wrong, you don't have to go through and plug an entire calculation back into your calculator. Sometimes they will be multiple steps before you get to your final answer. So 13.985 has five significant figures. 330, there's no decimal point here, so that ending zero does not count. So there are only two significant figures that I should have in my final answer. Remember, beginning zeros are not significant. I do need those zeros at the beginning of the number, but they are not the two significant places. I need to go two places beyond those beginning zeros. So to this place, and then I'm going to look at the three. Three does not round it up. So point zero point zero four two will be the answer to this question. It only has two significant figures in it. Again, those beginning zeros are very important but they are not significant figures. If you have a multi-step problem, one that includes both addition and subtraction and multiplication division, you need to keep track of the significant figures as you go, where things would round, but keep the entire answer in your calculator until you get to the final answer. Don't round things off after each step. So here we have 22.4 minus 13.52 divided by 69.658. Order of operations is I'm going to do the subtraction that's in the numerator first. 22.4 minus 13.52 in my calculator tells me it's 8.8. .8. Now, if this were the final step, because I'm subtracting, I round to the fewest number of decimal places. 22.4 has one decimal place, 13.52 has two decimal places, so my answer should technically only go out to the tenths place. So I'm going to put a little bar over that 8, saying if this was where I was going to be stopping, this is where my answer would end. So really, the significance of this 8.88 only goes out to the tenths place. You don't have to include that notation in it necessarily. You can use whatever notation works for you. However, that's just a notation I use to help me keep track of where the significance ends as I'm moving through a calculation. I would leave that entire 8.88 in my calculator, and then I have to divide by 69.658, which gives me this long decimal point, decimal in my calculator. When I'm dividing, I round to the fewest number of significant figures. This is where it becomes very important that we made some sort of notation that I actually stop here. Because this 8.88 really only has two significant figures because I should have stopped at the tenths place. So there are really only two significant figures on the top number, and there are five on the bottom number. So my final answer should only have two significant figures. So that beginning zero doesn't count. I'm going to go two places beyond it and then look at one place past that. The seven is going to round that two up to 1.3. If I didn't have that little bar over the number, I might have looked at this and thought that there were three significant figures up here. But there really aren't because I should be stopping at the tenths place. But again, leave that entire number in your calculator until you get to that final answer. Sometimes you will get different answers if you put in a rounded number partway through. So when you're adding and subtracting, round to the fewest number of decimal places. When you're multiplying or dividing, round to the fewest number of significant figures.